Sean Duffy, Fox News contributor and former Republican congressman for Wisconsin, joins me now. Sean, good morning to you. Uh, I mean, there's no Martha. shortage of information for the uh, cover of the New York Post these days. Uh, I mean, these stories just keep coming at such a shocking clip. What's your reaction to what happened at the Zeldin home? And what, what's the larger implication of this, do you think? Well, I mean, I think the feeling here is no one is safe. You could be a U.S. congressman uh, living at your home with your kids, and violence comes, as Lee Zeldin said, to your doorstep. And, Martha, we know this as parents. There's nothing more uh, important to a parent than to protect your children. And when your kids can't go out, they can't be at home doing their homework without threats of violence like this. I think this is a number one issue in the hearts and minds of American voters and, and New York voters. And again, if you have a Democrat campaign that's focused on abortion or climate change, but a parent can't keep their kids safe or they can't feed their kids or they can't fill up their car with gas, uh, those are top tier issues. And Democrats can't focus on this because they're the cause of this problem. It's their policies that have brought this violent crime to our doorsteps. And uh, they have to take responsibility for it. And I think in this campaign season, you see Republicans actually holding them to account. And again, I, I look at New York. I'm, I'm, I'm a Wisconsinite, but I look at New York politics, Martha. And if you can move the city of New York by a point and a half, two points, uh, where voters go, listen, crime is my issue. Democrats haven't kept me safe. I'm going to vote for a Republican. All of a sudden, you flip the state, and Lee Zeldin could be the next governor, Republican in the great state of New York. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Kathy Hochul put out a statement. Obviously, she is the current governor. She's running against Lee Zeldin in this race. And she said you know, she was glad that the family was safe. Um, but I heard Pete King speaking out about this, a former congressman, over the weekend. He said, you know, Kathy Hochul you know, needs to make this her, her number one issue. She needs to be this loud governor who is saying to the legislature, using her bully pulpit to say to them, look, you guys need to amend these reforms. It is clearly not working. People look at this. Lee Zeldin's neighborhood looks pretty much like every neighborhood across the country. And we saw this father who lost his life in the lobby of a courtyard Marriott over the weekend. So this is not a, an urban city issue. This is happening in neighborhoods where, you know, people live in leafy tree-lined streets, Sean. You know, you're 100% you're right. And you, you look at the policies, and it's the fact that you're letting uh, violent criminals out of jail. There's no cash bail policy that New York and other states have implemented. Let's violent criminals back out on the street. And it's not, you know, 90% uh, of Americans who are committing these crimes. You have a small, uh, you know, group of Americans, 10, 5% of them that are repeat offenders that aren't kept behind bars to keep our community safe. So that's the first problem. Kathy Hochul mm -hmm. should go out and do a rally with, with police officers and say, you know what? I'm going to push every Democrat politician to fully fund your police force. I have your back. I'm going to support you. You do your job. You get criminals off the street. Keep, our, keep us safe. And by the way, when you arrest them, when you do the investigation so prosecutors can prosecute them, uh, we're going to keep them behind bars. Yeah. That message actually would save Democrats. But, but Martha, they're so invested in these policies. Well, obviously. They're not going to do it. They're, yeah. they're, 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 I mean, she has the choice to do. She has a choice, right? She has that choice. She yeah. could be doing it, um, but she's not. So I think that tells you what you need to know about where she stands on this. Let's go out to the Midwest and take a look at uh, your home state of Wisconsin, because this crisis has become a big issue across the country. And we know from polls that people care very deeply about their safety and their security. Here's a bit of the candidates in the Wisconsin Senate race. Watch this. We have a huge problem with skyrocketing crime. Uh, one of the issues is we're not keeping criminals in jail. If you want to reduce crime, first of all, you have to fully fund the police. And of course, uh, my opponent is opposed to you know, fully funding uh, police budgets, but we need to keep criminals in jail. It has been sensationalized and it's also been mischaracterized. Now, I supported bail reform. Now, under my plan, Dangerous people don't get to buy their way out of prison. This is about keeping people safe by making sure that those who are likely to offend and cause harm do not get to buy their way out of uh, jail. Interesting uh, to listen to that. So Johnson, Ron Johnson did admit that Barnes never used defund language directly, but he did criticize, quote, bloated police budgets, which is obviously a suggestion that the police budget is too big and needs to be streamlined. Uh, Barnes has raised a stunning $20 million in the third quarter. This is an extraordinarily tight race. 
uh, in the polling, Johnson's closed the gap. There was a period where he was behind, um, I think, by even double digits at one point in this race, if I'm right about that. But anyway, what, what's happening right now is that they are in a statistical tie. There's a look at the last few months in that Wisconsin race. Your thoughts on what's going on in this race in your home state, Sean? And, and real clear politics has Ron Johnson up by a point and a half, Martha. Um, so I think it looks, you know, pretty for Ron Johnson. But here's, I would have given. I said, you know what? You have to push back on uh, Mandela Barnes when he calls you an extremist on abortion. Ron Johnson didn't do that. All Ron Johnson has done is said, you can hit me on abortion. I'm going to run on crime. All, all Ron Johnson's ads are on crime. And since he's done that, Martha, it's worked. The Wisconsin voters want to be safe. Remember, the, the, the Christmas parade uh, killer was in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, the, the riots in southeast Wisconsin uh, are in the forefront of our voters' minds. And Ron Johnson, a law and order guy, that's a message that has brought up to your point. He was down by almost double digits, and he's come back to over a point because people care about this issue. Mondale Barnes, who Ron Johnson is running against, has only had to run in like Democrat primaries, appeal to left wing uh, voters. This is the first time he's had to come in and actually try to appeal to moderate voters and win a statewide race. And his record is crushing him, Martha. He can't stand on the record as a left winger in the assembly, but also yeah. uh, as the lieutenant governor, which has allowed a great wide gaping hole for Ron Johnson to drive a massive truck through. And I think in the end, Wisconsin voters are going to vote for Ron Johnson. We will see. It's going to be an interesting night. A lot of tight, ra tight races out there. Let me swing yeah. your uh, our discussion over to the White House because they are still trying to sort of clean up and amend the president's comments on Russia's threat. The president saying last week that America is facing the prospect or the world is of a nuclear Armageddon. And the administration and other Democrats kind of jumped in over the weekend on the Sunday shows to downplay what the president himself said at a fundraiser on Friday night. You have a uh, modern nuclear power and the leader of that modern nuclear power willing to use irresponsible rhetoric the way that Mr. Putin has uh, several times in just the last week or two. Uh, the president, I think, was accurately reflecting uh, the fact that the stakes are very high right now. Well, I think the president is right to raise the risk of nuclear conflict because Vladimir Putin is increasingly getting pushed into a corner. So Republicans and even one of the president's close European allies not happy with that rhetoric. Watch this. Oh, my goodness. First of all, those comments were reckless. I think they, even more importantly, they demonstrate maybe one of the greatest foreign policy failures of the last decades, which was the failure to deter Vladimir Putin. I thought what he said was irresponsible. On every level, it's irresponsible. By saying Armageddon, you just strengthened Putin. You just gave him confidence to think that Biden's scared. I have generally always refrained from doing fictional politics, and I think it's especially appropriate when talking about nuclear. Well, we've seen what's happening this morning, uh, Congressman, in Russia, and we've seen the attacks on a number of cities in Ukraine after the bridge explosion over the weekend, the, the bridge that goes from Russia to Crimea. This is, this is getting very heated. Um, you know, do you think the president's right or wrong to, to, to be warning that we could be headed in a very dangerous direction here? Well, it's, pro it's probably appropriate to give a warning that we're headed in, in a direction that could lead us to Armageddon, but to do it offhandedly at a Democrat fundraising event is probably the right, not the right format to do that. Uh, and I do think, uh, to, uh, to Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo's point, it does project weakness. The problem we have here, though, Martha, is you have Republicans and Democrats alike pushing Biden to be more aggressive, push Vladimir Putin back into a corner, give more armaments and tools to the Ukrainians. That might be fine, but we have to realize that that, that Putin has nuclear weapons, enough weapons to destroy the world. We could have Armageddon, and instead of playing checkers, we have to play a chess game here. Where are the negotiators coming, in, coming into play? Maybe instead of sending armaments and money to Ukraine, we could take Vladimir Putin's money away just if we start pumping American energy and oil right here. Reduce the price of oil. It takes away the tools and money that Vladimir Putin has uh, to fight this war. I mean, there's some simple solutions that don't escalate, that actually de-escalate. And we have that power here with American energy. And Joe Biden doesn't seem to want to do that. And again, I think that you have too many Republicans and Democrats trying to get Putin in a corner. And when you get a guy like Putin, 
who wants to save face into a corner, I think really bad things happen. Yeah. Let them save face. Let's figure this out. Get smart people in the room and make sure we avoid Armageddon. Yeah, this is a multi-level chess match that is going on it here. Is. It's very, very complicated, and we need to take a very close look at all of these dynamics. Uh, President Biden also talked about a potential off-ramp. Um, and some people are critical of that language, but we're going to talk about it a lot more in the coming days. Uh, thank you very much, Congressman. Good to have you here. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.